Hi guys, thank you for watching this video. In this video I'll be showing you how to interact with the menu in VR with motion controllers. Please keep in mind that I'm a tech artist and not a scripter and that there might be other ways, better ways or faster ways to do this. Uh, before we begin I'd like to give a shout out to Captain Pack from Reddit uh, who came up with some clever ways to make this method work. The link to his post is in the description below. Okay, I'll be showing you uh, a demonstration first uh, with this method. Um, and I'll be showing you the blueprints after this. Alright, let's get this party started. Well, as you can see, I have my two controllers here. Um, if you don't know how to do this, uh, please check out my other video where I explain uh, how you can set this up. Here we have our menu, and if we point at it, you see uh, there is a, uh, a line trace coming from the top here and an indicator where we are hitting it. Uh, the indicator is a little blue ball <laughs> that's on the bottom of my controller. So, uh, if we uh, cast to the menu, uh, it translates to a, a little image uh, that's in the corner here and it calculates where uh, we are on our widget so it knows uh, on, on which button, button we are. If you are on the first one, second one, or third one. If I uh, pull my uh, trigger on the back side here it activates the button and you can see a little smile here <laughs> and I've so set up some changes on the other buttons as well as you can see and that's about it uh, let's uh, go over the blueprint all right let's start with how the 3d widget is set up uh, I just have a scene component uh, which you need for uh, uh, every uh, 3d widget uh, on that is the Next is the, uh, the main menu widget where all the buttons uh, are. Uh, we have a static mesh for the visuals, and we have our uh, our smiley uh, widget here, which changes uh, on uh, which button we click. Okay, let's go into the button widget right here. Uh, it's a, just a typical widget uh, with a canvas panel and uh, three buttons with some text in it and of course my uh, very cool VR menu text. And right here is the important part of the of the widget. It's a, a cursor called my cursor which is a variable and it's aligned uh, with 0.5.5. Uh, this is important because if we don't do this it's, uh, it's getting offset on where we uh, hit the menu so if you put it like this uh, it will work perfectly next up is our VR pawn it's a pretty easy setup it's the same one we actually used uh, in our previous video we added some uh, particle system beams here and our menu so let's go over some code now um, we have our custom event here for our left controller the right controller is exactly the same so I will only show you uh, one, uh, one controller here um, this custom event gets called on a tick event or uh, right here for the left and the right side and the first thing we do is uh, get a line trace for objects uh, which is set up right here uh, we get our hand position and orientation and with the position uh, we add it to the actor location and this, this is our uh, uh, starting point of the line trace uh, we get the orientation uh, of the the controller and we get the forward factor of that and we multiply it by 3000 and we add that to the uh, actor location and the, the location of the uh, the hands and that's our end uh, tra uh, the end of the trace uh, right, the next step is uh, we break the hit results and we check uh, the hit component because it's a component of the VR pawn and we get the display name and we check if it starts with uh, the VR menu 3D, uh, 3D widget because that's what it's called here. Uh, if it spawns in the world it gets a number behind it so that's why I use a start with. And we check if this is true. If this is true, we activate our uh, particle beam. And next up, we uh, store our impact location uh, in a variable, a factor variable. Uh, we check with a bool if we actually hit the menu. Uh, since we did, we set it to true. 
and we set our pointer, the little square, we set it to the location where we hit the menu. Uh, we get the hit actor here and we, get, we cast it to the uh, VR menu 3D widget and we store that in our uh, in a new variable so we can call it later uh, and next up we call a custom event in uh, the menu itself or the, the 3d widget itself with the impact location so the first thing we do in this uh, custom event called ray trace world location we get our menu widget uh, the widget with the buttons in it like uh, this one and we get the world transfor transform of it and uh, we inverse it and we add our uh, location to it uh, the return factor value we multiply by a, a minus one in integer and uh, we also get our user object uh, of a user widget object and we cast that to our menu and we then call uh, the ray trace widget location in the menu itself and we passed through our uh, location so let's go to that one and this is where the cor the cursor comes in um, we break our location uh, factor and we pass it through to uh, uh, make factor 2d uh, 2d uh, the y goes in the x and the z goes in into the y and uh, we then get our cursor and set its render translation uh, and that's it for the the cost so what this previous code did was uh, we get a line trace and we see if it hits the menu if it does we uh, set our cursor to the hit location and um, what we do next is if we pull the trigger on the back side here the left trigger use um, we check if our menu was hit if it was uh, we check if our menu or our 3D widget is actually in the world if we don't do this we get a access and none error and if this is true uh, we trigger our of uh, recall our uh, custom event inside the VR uh, 3D widget and uh, it's called trigger pressed on menu right and in the main uh, in this custom event uh, we call our main menu widget uh, get the user widget object of it and cast it to it and from here uh, we call our uh, custom event inside the main menu with this custom event we uh, do a for each loop for all the buttons which is in a, uh, stored in a array and this array gets filled uh, on the construct of this menu so it's always filled and uh, here are three buttons we make an array and store it in a uh, array here in array variable right and this is the important part of the blueprint uh, what this basically does it checks if our cursor uh, is in between uh, the position and the size of one of the but buttons we do this by uh, we getting uh, each button as a cons confess slot um, we get the position of it and the size and we break those uh, 2D f uh, factor 2D files and we check it against the size of the, of the or the translation of the uh, cursor and if uh, this is true so if this cursor is between between uh, the, uh, one of these buttons we set the background of it uh, to if, if it's true we set it to orange and if it's not true we set it back to its default value and from here we just switch on int this int uh, is get coming from here from the for loop from the buttons and we start with button one two and three and we just uh, set the visibility to the smiley and uh, sw smiley widget and we change its uh, its brush with a, a different texture for each one uh, so if we push the first one we get uh, the first smiley and uh, so on and so on and that's basically all there is to it
if you have any question or something is not clear enough please uh, leave a comment so i can uh, try to help you uh, get everything set up right and yeah that's just about it um, i'm doing these tutorials to improve my speech uh, to the audience and uh, so if you have any comment about it uh, please uh, do so and it will help me improve myself <laughs> and uh, i will show you one last time that's still working let me just put on my headset All right. and there we go it's still working um, I can do um, uh, a video about how to grab uh, the menu like this if someone wants uh, just uh, tell it in the comments I guess uh, so you can go from here and uh, in, in, uh, do your own thing with your menu and uh, happy coding I guess Bye-bye.